Whoa. All the dolls represent real Raleigh school students. I'm glad that I have a human audience here tonight. I'm Johnny. You have to prepare the bowl <laughs> with your herb. <laughs> this is my history. This is something I think people should know about. When you grow up in a small town in Newfoundland, you see the people have a sense of humor about hard times. Check, check. I turned that into a career and hit the road. Mr. Johnny Harris! Now I'm on a mission to find the funny in the places you'd least expect it. Canada's struggling small towns. Towns that are against the ropes, but hanging in there. Still laughing in the face of adversity. Welcome to Rally Alberta. In central Alberta, near the famous Badlands, there's a tiny pioneer town that used to be a hub for surrounding farms and ranches called Rowley. But I'm not going to lie to you, arriving here was a bit like hitting Dodge at high noon. Rowley, Alberta, population eight. <laughs> Good thing people from the surrounding area showed up for my show, or I'd have been pretty lonely. And here we are, here we are in this lovely town hall. I was surprised there was a town hall, because with your population, you could have just bought a minivan. <laughs> Hitting the saloon, I thought for sure. I'm the butt of some kind of joke here. You ever hear the one about the Newfoundlander who walks into a bar? Hey there. So he sits down. Can I get a, a beer? And orders a shot and gets one. Oh, Jesus. Leroy Avramenko. He must have taken some great uh, course in tourism hospitality. I was in his saloon for about two minutes before he's waving a shotgun in my face, <laughs> telling me how the sawdust is good for soaking up blood. A rubber shotgun. That's not a weapon so much as an s and toy or something. <laughs> I guess I was a fresh victim oh, for Leroy's many dusty saloon gags. Asshole of the month club. Check out who's in there. Oh, very good. I soon found out why a strange face was so welcome around here. So how many people are there here in, uh, in Rowley? It's two, four, six. I've never seen anybody count up to, the <laughs> to their population. Yeah, in the summertime, there's eight. I've had more people in my bathroom. <laughs> but maybe that's the whole point. People come here to get away from the hustle and bustle of a double-digit population. <laughs> Have you ever thought about Spending any time somewhere else? Where? Calgary, Edmonton. Gee, don't talk about cities. Time to hit Main Street. My guide to rally was Leroy's granddaughter, Harley, a chip off the old block. Your grandfather is quite the character. I say he didn't exactly age gracefully, but no one out here really <laughs> does. You either get out or you get old, and he got old. Harley, she's only 17, and she's got the keys to the kingdom. That's not a figure of speech, either. She's got the keys to every building on Main Street. Why? Because they're no longer inhabited by humans. Hello! I feel like we need to be afraid right now of a nuclear blast. When the grain elevator shut down, the farmers stopped coming here. All the businesses closed, and now it's more or less a museum. Is this to measure your cranium? Uh, no, it's actually for picking up blocks of ice from the rivers and... Yeah, but like you that. could use it to measure your cranium. Like, you guys just bought that boxcar on an episode of Storage Wars, right? <laughs> <laughs> Had a quick look inside, said, yeah, we can write museum on this, it's not bad. That's a perm machine, believe it or not. A perm machine? Yeah. They permed your hair by running electricity through dozens of cables into your wet hair. <laughs> That's clearly a bad idea. This is a school? Whoa. Yep. This makes the perm machine look like a hug from Nan. All the dolls represent real Raleigh school students. What? But I gotta say, after touring uh, uh, the museums and the schoolhouse with the dolls and whatnot, I'm glad, I'm really appreciative that I have a human audience here tonight. <laughs> This is the church in here. Ooh. 
But Harley was great, you know, in, in a way, she's the, the cultural ambassador for the town. No? No. It seems to me that a lot of people still contribute back to the oh, town yeah. a bit. Yeah, I think it's because it's worth keeping around. You know, this is interesting stuff. You're not going to see this every day. This is my history. This is something that interests me. This is something I think people should know about. Yeah, that's really admirable. Amazing. Rowley's business may be all gone, but the spirit lives on. Speaking of spirits. The saloon, there's definitely some stuff. Grandpa will tell stories about how, you know, he's been sitting in the saloon at night and left out a shot of whiskey for him, gone home, came back, shot was drank, and stuff like that. The shot was drank. That could have been a ghost, or it could have been Leroy. Either way, this tour was about to go full circle to Sam's. So who's Sam? The guy up there. So it turns out the namesake of the saloon is a Chinese bootlegger. When he got out of jail, he come here. Yeah. And he didn't bootleg here, he just drank. One day, Sam disappeared. So the town took up the saloon, and now, once a month, hundreds of people from all over the area come here for this big bash called Pizza Night. I love that, that, that all the, the revenue from Pizza Night goes back into the town. It funds everything, and it works. I think if Lorraine Harper set up a pizza stand at 24 Sussex, Canada would be out of the deficit by the end of the year. <laughs> Is there going to be any entertainment? There's one local band that used to play here a couple of times, but they don't listen very good, so I won't let them back in. What's the name of the band? Norton the Nerds. Outlawed <laughs> rock bands and pizza? Rowley's getting the saucy. Back in the 1920s and out, there was probably three or 400 people lived here. Right? We had steady trains, a couple of garages, lumber yards, pool halls, stores, whatever. Right? Doug Hampton and the missus lived their whole lives in Rowley. Doug, how come the weed industry here collapsed? It was a matter of their building bigger elevators and shutting these down. Eh? I heard the story that when the, the company men came to tear down your railway station, Doug Hampton ran them out of town. So we went over and asked him, well, we're here to knock down your train station. And we said, no, you aren't. <laughs> Listen, I know his hat doesn't look too intimidating at first, <laughs> but it's like a 10-gallon wicker hat. <laughs> it's like somebody crossed John Wayne with some patio furniture. <laughs> Doug tells me the folks in the area bought these buildings, and the money they raise at their pizza night keeps them standing. We're uh, proud of our buildings, and we keep them looking good, eh? That's pretty impressive. But my next stop was a weird one, a totally normal family of four that chose to move here. <laughs> and Patrick and Jamie, they're doing their part. <laughs> Every time Patrick and Jamie share a bottle of wine, the population of Rowley goes up by 10%. <laughs> After living in Calgary, over a million people, to raise my kids, I wanted to teach them to fish and maybe hunt or garden. And then Patrick decided he loved me enough to stay. Everything's turning up, Jamie. I know. Jamie's a stay-at-home mom, and Patrick commutes to work in the oil industry. Yeah. Happy wife, happy life is the expression, yeah, yeah. right? But as I was learning, nothing in Raleigh is quite as it seems. Jamie here used to be the drummer for none other than Nort and the Nerds. I guess it's hard to rock and roll when you have two tiny kids. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the Muppets? Animal the Drummer? That's Jamie, that's... Oh, really? No, 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 no. <laughs> we used to get a lot of complaints. Leroy said we were too loud, we weren't allowed to play in the saloon. Get your stuff out. Really? I gotta meet the band, I gotta meet these oh, guys. Oh, yes, you do. Jamie has an incredible passion for Rowley. Thanks for coming out to meet us. Jamie told me that if she could, she would die in Rowley. That's easy. Go for a drive with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're cutting on the inside! Hold up. Let's roll it back here. Mike McKee is a fourth-generation wheat farmer who lives just outside of Rowley. Oh, I've been here all my life. My great-grandfather settled this place up here in 1898, and we've been here ever since. After that long, I figured the farming game was nice and stable. Anything can happen. Wrong again. You can go from being a millionaire to being broke within three weeks if stuff turns south, right? Then I asked a question that would change my view of Rowley forever. Is there anything to do for fun around here? Mike McKee.
He spends most of his time fixing up all the cars so he can get drunk and race them around the field. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> and he seems pretty content doing it. Anywhere else he wouldn't be content, he'd be incarcerated. <laughs> oh, we're cutting on the inside! <laughs> you may want your belt. I'm putting my belt down! <laughs> Tell my mom I died doing something stupid! It's wild because it goes against everything you've learned, every instinct you have to be driving right behind someone to accelerate and hit them. <laughs> That's the way you do it. <laughs> but after you've done it a few times, <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> uh -oh. to do this. Exactly. What a friggin' blast. The liberation of living on your own land by your own terms. Suddenly the middle of nowhere had serious appeal. Now maybe it was the concussion talking, but the reasons to fight for this town were all making sense. Rowley Redneck Rum Runners! Yeah! I'd met the Rowley Eight. Time to get out of town and see what's really holding this place together. Back in the days of the Wild West, Rowley's grain elevator and railway serviced all the farms and ranches around here. But what's binding them to Rowley now? I went up to the Richmond Ranch. We've been here for a long time. My family came to the country of Canada in 1912. Tiffany and Sam are the fifth generation taking care of animals here. I figured it'd be dirty work. Little did I know that cattle up for sale get so much primping and preening. Look at my girl, Aurora. Aurora's going on a diet. The more bum, the more beef. Big butts. That's it. So do you guys have to do all this much work every day? Sure, it's hard work, but it's peace and quiet. It's beautiful scenery. It's every day waking up, and you get to do something different. I wouldn't want to do anything else. shaved one arse cheek and not the other arse cheek. See, we call that a gouge. That's not good. No. It's showtime for the buyers. Fingers crossed that her huge rear is distracting everybody from the gouge. Aurora, she's got good childbearing hips. First thing I look for in a lady. Well, have a look around. <laughs> <laughs> I like both heifers. Yeah. Probably my choice. That's right. This heifer here. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> it all came down to a haircut. A haircut? <laughs> OK, OK, I get it, I get it. Brilliant. Hey. Well done, girl. Second place. We're happy with it. Second place I could live with. What came next was total bull. So we sell these bulls, and we fertility test them for the new owner. First thing we do is measure the scrotal size of the bull because they have to have adequate testicle size to be a performing bull. We, we measure the what? All right, big guy. This is my first time, so let's just try to be reasonable with each other. Have you found the scrotum? Found it? <laughs> it's all I can see is taking up my entire view. <laughs> do you know what you get if you're the most desirable bull on the farm? You get a big electric probe up your arse <laughs> to extract your sperm. This is magic, Mike. It looks like a <laughs> damn crow's missile. Suddenly, I don't feel bad for having never won a beauty contest. <laughs> so then, the hand or the this? Both. I'm Johnny. I think it's good for us to be on a first name basis, given the intimate nature of the, the process that we're about to go through right now, yeah, you can have a sniff, get used to each other. <laughs> Before the probe goes in, you have to... Uh, <laughs> prepare the bowl... <laughs> with your arm. Keep going. Does it feel normal? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never done it before. <laughs> I had a plastic glove up to here and a 2,000-pound bull up to here. 
I was sweating bullets. I didn't know what I was doing. I was in way over my elbow. <laughs> this is like a puppet show gone very wrong. I feel like I could make him talk. <laughs> I kept having this weird, creepy thought that the bull was trying to take my blood pressure. <laughs> And at any moment, the bull's gonna turn around and go, 120 over 80. I didn't just get close with nature here, I got intimate, and it changed me. Thanks, Jackie. So now Jackie's gonna examine this under the microscope. It was like I was invested in these animals' lives after one day. I can only imagine the kind of ties five generations would create. I see... Sperm! We got swimmers, baby. Is any one of them asking for directions? Oh, look who's the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the house to really wash my hands. Jim's wife, Stephanie, was there, and as usual, Rowley ropes you in. Stephanie makes sculptures out of puffed wheat. We were building a, a grain elevator. We ma I make puffed wheat arts to bring in money to uh, keep the hall and all the community functions going. And there's a neighbor who really likes it. He's gone up to $1,000. Are you serious? For the people who stay here, what keeps them here? The love of the land. A love of the land and a love of chocolate puffed wheat. Yes. <laughs> It's a lot like measuring a scrotal circumference. You, you did wash your hands after you uh, measured the scrotal on the bull, did you? <laughs> but after just harvesting bull semen all day, I didn't want to ask her how she got the puff wheat to stick together. <laughs> okay, so if this auction's for a thousand bucks, split it 50-50? But mine's all going to the community, so. Well, I haven't decided where my half is going yet. Well, I'm pretty sure after uh, pizza night tomorrow night and you feel all the warmth of the community and everybody there together, you'll know what to do with your half. Uh, we'll see. First, I need to talk to the lone band of pizza night outcasts, Nort and the Nerds. I knew I had to find the ear-splitting rock demons, Nort and the Nerds. Metal shredders so diabolically demonic, they were banished from the one saloon in town. Surely they were terrible troubadours. Surely they were... These guys? I'd heard about Norton and the Nerds. You guys are legends in this area. <laughs> I was expecting, like, shaggy hair, renegade type. Interesting age dynamic in Nor and the Nerds. Serena, did, did you go to school with these guys? <laughs> Ian's daughter, Serena, she's only 13. The rest of the guys got underwear older than her. <laughs> Serena, watch the beat. The rest of you, watch your cholesterol. <laughs> I've always claimed that Rowley's been built in a day, and we've been trying to put it together ever since. We've never let it die. Like, it just keeps going and going. They weren't loud. They're proud. Just like everyone else around Rowley, they want to let the world know. I couldn't stand on the sidelines any longer. Would it be possible for Nort and the Nerds to appease Leroy with a song? I think I got a verse, I got a verse, I got a verse. Oh, Two, three, four. Johnny's not a virgin anymore. <laughs> it was everything they told me and more. When this town of eight exploded with people from all over, people who want to see this tiny place survive, it all became clear. Pizza! There you go, there you go boys! Rowley is a lot bigger than it looks. Here, anyone can be an honorary citizen, but you gotta earn it. So, the Billy, 200 bucks. But there's one thing left to do in this place that's one horse shy of a one horse town, and it might get loud. After all, Rowley hadn't survived this long by keeping quiet. Norton and the Nerds are back in Sam's tonight. Yeah. Norton and the Nerds should be able to play here. Norton and the Nerds are from Rowley. They got started in Rowley. Leroy, come on up here, buddy. We got a song to sing for you. We're gonna call it the Song of Reconciliation. 
Nor any nerds not being able to play in Rowley. It's like Chilliwack not being able to play in Chilliwack. <laughs> Leroy, oh Leroy, we know you're the man. Leroy, don't you understand? It ain't fair the nerds got banned. You know it ain't fair you let our band. There was a divide in this town, and the only cure was cowbell. It ain't fair the nerds got banned. Today, uh, before I left the hotel, my mom called me for the first time since I've been here. She said, uh, Jonathan, uh, how is the place? I said, well, mom, you know, it's the standard Albertan town. The saloon is haunted by a Chinese bootlegger. <laughs> There's a bunch of dolls in the schoolhouse, and the whole city is run on guts, tenacity, bull semen, and pizza. <laughs> she said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm talking about Rowley, Alberta. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> On the map before now we are. We hope you're surprised, if nothing else. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. It was so good. I'm very proud to be from Rowley. Oh, Johnny is awesome. Who? Love it out here, even though there's some amusing stuff that sometimes goes on. You better come back with a bottle of rum next yeah. time. I'll like two bottles of rum. Time of my life. A great show, yeah. No rules apply. <laughs> True. Yeah. That's a mild way of putting it. Time to get pizzas. <laughs>